time to move from a lot of the text-based stuff, which looks like they're from a 1980s Matthew Broderick film, to creating some graphics that look like they belong in a 1980s Matthew Broderick film. So we're going to start with task 12, which is drawing lines. So let's jump across to the PDF, and as we see, we're on page 26. So um, rather than scrolling down, I'm just going to type in page 26 here and jump down. Okay, so drawing lines. So what we've got, these first two lines of code, they create the window. They tell it it's going to be 200 wide and 200 high. And I know this because it's there in the code. What's interesting about the draw line command is it's still telling it to do it in the graphics window, draw line. It's giving it the coordinates. So the first line is going from 10 out and 10 down, because you start up in this corner, to 100 out and 100 down. And the second line is going from 10 down and 100 out to 100 down and 10 out. So I'm going to grab this code and show you how that's working. So we paste it in here. Hmm, obviously forgot to copy it. There we go, jump back, paste it in and run the code. There we go, now what I'm going to do is just going to click the X. Now I'm going to tweak it a little bit. So, I'm going to go from 10, 10 again, and I'm going to go to 190, 190. So it's going to fill most of the window. Uh, and this time, instead of going from 10, 190, it's going to go, uh, 10, 100, it's going to go from 10, 190 to 190, 10. So what I'm expecting here is because I've expanded those coordinates into the, into the middle of the, um, to the bigger numbers, that it will fill most of the window. So we run that, and that's exactly what it did. If you see there, it's, so I've changed the coordinates, it changes where the lines go, and as you can see, the line is at this point blank. Sorry, not blank, black. Okay, let's jump back to the tutorial. So, so far so good. A lot of guff just telling me what I told you. So, more detail here. Same thing, but we've got some pen colours. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just grab their code for starters come across here. So just like text you can specify the line of the colour of the graphic line. So we run that and we've got green and gold, good Australian colours for you there. And it would be very easy here for me to change every time I see 100 to change it to 190 and I'd get a big crisscross like I had. So I'll just quickly do that and show you what I'm talking about. So you just, this um, the format of this is where does the line start, where does the line finish? You don't tell it about the angle or anything, you just say it goes from this point to this point. So we'll just quickly run that, and there you go. So when we say draw it on, it instantly draws it on. You don't actually see it track across the screen, it just says this is where a line will be. Okay, let's move on to the next level of complexity. So the size, ah, pen width, pen width 10. Okay, so, and I think that's. Uh, it's other than that actually pretty similar. Let's see, I'll grab it. So this time we're telling it how wide that's meant to be. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to make one wider than the other. Pen width 10. Oh, okay, so pen width sets the pen width all up. So I'll run that quickly. So we've got it 10 across. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab that pen width command and I'm going to drop it in before we start drawing the gold line. So now I want the pen width to be 20. So the gold line should be 20, it should be 20 pixels across, twice as wide. And in fact that's exactly what we saw. So you can change it line by line if you want to, as I just did then. Okay, moving on. Ah, background colour. So we can set the background colour of the window like we did in the previous example. And what this is doing is it is actually saying here's a number of different variables to set the um, to set the line to. So uh, draw a line from 20 to i times 15. Now i is going to be the number that's ticking over from 1 to 10. i times 15 to 100 i times 15. So basically from here at that length to here at that width. And how do we know that the pen, oh the pen width is going up by i as well. Great. So Let's grab that, bounce across. So what this is actually doing is it's running a little loop from here to here. It's saying count from 1 to 10 and then 
draw the line, the width of i, and then the distance down of i. Oh, actually, of i times 15. Um, so that it's um, the, the lines are going down the screen. So it's using that variable, variable to control two different things, which is how we end up with the pattern. There we go. And if I wanted to do that a bit differently, let's make my window a bit bigger. Let's, in fact, give us a nice big window, 500 uh, by 500. And instead of doing that 10 times, I'm going to do it 20 times. See what happens. I'm not entirely sure if truth be told. It's going to be bigger, obviously. Oh, there we go. So we, in fact, ended up with quite a huge chubby bar there. There's possibly a number of bars merged together. So what I could do to avoid that is it says i times 15. Well, I'm going to change that. I'm going to call that i times 25 and i times 25. Just space those bars out a bit by changing what I'm multiplying it by. Ah, uh, there we go. And I, in fact, ran out of windows. But as you can see, we are those bars are spacing out as they go. And I could stretch them across the screen too. So what I'm looking for is it says it starts at 20 with i times that and 180. So that's how far it is across. But I know, I think I've got, what, a 500 window. So I might go to 480, I think. 480, and then we'll run. And I think that that will cover, there we go, most of the window. So you can start to see how we might create background patterns with quite a small amount of code. So let's just pop back. There you go. So that's the end of that. Now, my variation on this was spreading out those bars a bit and making them wider. I'll look forward to seeing what yours is too.